Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel tonight. And welcome to the live stream. We'll be talking about stained glass, answering your questions, and offering tips and techniques. And uh, just chatting about stained glass. So welcome. That's right, Barb. Welcome, everybody. Uh, just wanted to kind of let's uh, we we're going to get start out. We had some questions come up during the week. And uh, so we're going to work on those first while everybody's kind of getting their dishwasher full and uh, maybe finishing up dinner. And uh, so we're going to be we're going to answer a few questions that were uh, people had written to us last week and then we'll get started with everybody else's. OK, so. Um we just want to give you all a reminder to uh, if you like what we're teaching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, we really appreciate it. You know, you know, the thumb is our favorite finger. So uh, mm -hmm. thumbs up is good. And, you know, if you can always, you know, subscribe if you haven't. So please do. And uh, we Catwoman's we, from Maryland to it. OK. All right. Yeah, we. Uh, oh, Patsy's from Maryland too. Okay, so we have two people from Maryland. Right. And Ed's family is from Maryland, so yeah. Uh, yeah, his he still has relatives that live there, and um, yeah, so yeah. welcome. Still have a few relatives that live there. There aren't many of them left. Uh, I do have an uh, uh, aunt and uncle that live on Thirty um, Fourth Street in Hamden in Baltimore. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Where they dress up this, the, the street for Christmas each year. And uh, so it's really, really quite beautiful. I've been up there in quite a while. Wisconsin. So, hey. Hey. All right. Okay. Catwoman and Patsy are friends. That's cool. And invite your friends and, and, you know, we feel like family here. Uh, Wisconsin. We have some friends here from Wisconsin. So welcome. We'll wait a few minutes. We have some updates and announcements to make, but I think we're just going to jump right in and get answer started. Answer some questions yeah, from last answer week, Barb, some and questions we, we from last those. week, and then we'll start answering your questions as well. And these well. questions will probably help you guys too. I, I'm sure they will because uh, you know they're just uh, they're just questions about tools and what we all do, uh, either for a hobby or for a living. Um, we've had a uh, comments on our most popular video, which is about soldering. It's by far our most popular video, but there are no close-ups in that video because when we did that video, we were we using your cell just, phone, Barb. <laughs> I was still using my cell phone, and yeah, it was, we were. And I was having problems with close-ups, and um, I spent an enormous amount of time on that video. So I am currently redoing that video with close-ups. And we're working our way through every video that we have and looking to see uh, where if we can add close ups. Where we can or, add close know, ups just, or kind of condense just, them down and put um, channel, you know, chapter can, markers in there. Yeah, maybe we can, you know, slide in some new footage where you can yeah. add when you edit it. But we are going to get you some close ups of working. You know, you don't really need to see what color shirt I'm wearing when I'm soldering. What you need to see is me soldering my hands, the solder, the flux, and the soldering iron all at one time. And we're going to give that to you because you know why? You've asked for it. <laughs> and it, <laughs> so I'm redoing that soldering video. And I, I didn't realize it was that long. It contains a ton of information. If you want to look at it, um, it's the five uh, top soldering, soldering tips. tips. And they are good uh, tips. I think you we just, premiered you know, it in February, and it, I mean, full of great information, but but you can't see my hands. Close up. Lacking in close up. But you know what? If you if you've soldered for a little bit of Thank time, you, or even a lot of time, you can always those tips. You know, those tips will help you along whether you can see what I'm doing or not. Because Jonathan, it's hey, word Gary. for word to tell you what to do while you're doing it. And uh, so maybe it'll help you. I hope it does. I really do. I hope it does. But we are going to get some close ups. And uh, right now, you know, one of the questions we had asked to us last week, Barb, was 
somebody wanted to know what the difference between the running pliers and the grousing pliers are. And you know what? I, you know what? I just happen to have a pair of each right here. Okay. So the, 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 uh, the main difference, or one of the differences between the two pliers is that one's larger than the other. That's oh, we didn't know that, but thank yeah. you. I thank just you thought I'd share that information with you. <laughs> hey, and um, I will tell you this: that your running pliers mm -hmm. are probably you should have them in your toolbox, but they're probably the one plier that you don't use a lot of because your grousing pliers are really what's in your hand all the time while you're working and cutting glass. Your running pliers, you can see them They're just like this. And we're going to try and get you a close up. But I want you to see that they have a top and a bottom just like your grousing pliers do. You see that? So they have a top and a bottom. And I'm going to turn this to you because I your bottom care. jaw on your running pliers is convex, which means it's curved like the outside radius of the earth. Your top jaw is concave, which means it turns in or up in the center, okay? So that your running pliers all your glass, when you score it, the glass must be broken from the opposite side that the score is on, okay? So a lot of times you're going to find yourself using your hands and your index fingers with your knuckles under the score, boom, down and away so you don't stab yourself, okay? And what you're going to find out, what happens when the running pliers is your top jaw goes down and the center of your bottom jaw comes up. And that, my friends, allows the glass to break just like that, okay? Now I have a pair of running pliers that I use in the glass shop in the back for cutting heavier glass. I've had those pliers for almost 50 years now. Actually, I've had two pair for 50 years. You're giving away your eight. How could you have them for 50 years? You're only 50. Um, was it a, not quite they put them in your crib yeah. <laughs> but anyway you're you know your your running pliers are probably the pliers the one plier in your toolbox that you could leave behind if you had to but your grousing pliers ladies and gentlemen are the pliers of choice they are great for breaking glass they're great for running glass they are also great for grossing the glass, which means trimming up the edges, popping off a little ear if you have one that doesn't belong there. And also by picking up, okay, by picking up and allowing that curved jaw, you can grouse the glass. So... The difference between the two pliers are really, uh, actually, there's quite a bit because they both do different things, but your running pliers are probably the ones, if you don't have a pair, you, you may or may not need them. But my suggestion, the running pliers are part of your toolbox, whether you use them or not. And if you don't use them, practice using them. Otherwise, when you do need to use them, you're not going to know how to use them correctly. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. <clears throat> but are mostly, are these used for uh, running straight lines? Yes. Okay. For running, running straight lines. Okay. So here's the deal. Your jaw is an inch long right here on your grousing pliers. Your jaw is an inch and a quarter deep. You can only go in so far on your score to break your glass off, okay? These will allow you to go anywhere on that score as long as you're in an inch or, long, or wider. They're helpful. And they're very helpful to run that score out. The other thing is, is you, you may not have enough oomph in your 
two knuckles and your thumbs to pull down on that glass and actually break it and go through that score. So like Barbara said, she doesn't have the oomph to do I that. I... That's why these running pliers, you know, they wouldn't give you a tool to use if they didn't feel it was necessary. Well, I like these because if you have large sheets of glass and you want to cut them down to a size that a workable size, a manageable, a size, manageable sure. size, you can strip out your glass, score it, break it, score it, break it, or score it, score it, break it, break it, break it with these in no time. I don't have the strength to do that. I use those. I and love you'll find those. If you're, if you're breaking glass like that on straight lines, if that straight line is too long, when you pull down with either your left hand or your right hand, a lot of times it'll go to its weakest point, which is away from your score and to the outside, whether it be right or left. So just remember those tools in your toolbox are there for a reason and you should practice using them so that you do know how to use them. Okay. We have, um, a question, All a right. couple questions. Uh, when you get started, could you please discuss the work surface you use when cutting your glass? Um, then we have two different ones. Also, could you talk about the wax that I hear so much about, but not, uh, but yet no one says what they use? I don't know what the wax would be. The wax for polishing your, your copper foil uh, oh, projects. Oh, yeah. But, it's it's okay. just basic. It's turtle wax in the little plastic bottle. Your finishing compound. Your finishing compound. It's, for it's copper foil. For copper foil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Your, your stained glass when you're uh, doing lead caning, it does not get waxed. But your copper foil projects, because of the way it's fabricated, should be waxed to keep the oxidation away. However, if you don't clean it properly in the beginning, that wax will not do you any good. And the uh, cutting surfaces that we use, we use wood. Painted plywood. Or regular plywood. Or regular plywood, and but we, three quarters of an inch thick. Right. And we have a carpeted table in the back that we use to cut for cutting glass for cutting plate glass which is a quarter of an inch and thicker also our window pane glass and we also use it to cut mirrors on because it's easy to move around we don't have to worry about uh scratching it you know the, in the back our sheets come in and like four foot by ten foot five foot by ten foot six foot by ten foot and we make we take big ones and we make little ones out of them the biggest piece of art glass you're going to be able to find is usually it's probably going to be uh a 32 by 84. And if you get 32 by 42, those sheets are already split anyway. So, yeah. So probably at your stained glass supplier, they may have carpeted tables if they get in really, really big sheets of glass, but not you for, would see a carpeted. Yeah. Table. But not for cutting, for cutting patterns. No, you do not. You want to surface under mm -hmm. the glass that, when you're done cutting that piece of glass, you can sweep it off and vacuum it up later. You do not want to cut patterns of art glass on a carpeted table because underneath of you moves way too much. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of you have a heavy hand on with your glass cutter. So it definitely would not work. Um, Carpet is spongy. Okay. So we had it up. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, and thank you for the answer. I hope I got it. Right. <laughs> oh, we have another question. Uh, do you have any book suggestions? Well, um, as far as books go, the um, depending on what you want to do, okay, there are a lot of great uh, actually, if you're doing if you like residential windows or doing things for people's homes, Carolyn Kyle who is the author of many books, one of them entitled Entryways, is really good books to look at and, and get ideas. You know, if you're looking for ideas for patterns, quilting books, quilting pattern books are really okay. awesome. Okay, so Rich is recovering from shoulder surgery. Sorry about that. And I hope you 
have a swift recovery because I know how that feels. Um, so he's reading up on glass techniques in history. Okay. Um, my favorite book for that would be the, the stained glass uh, association of association America. book. Um, and that book is on our website, but that is a, that is a huge investment. That's almost as much as your shoulder surgery. <laughs> But if you can borrow it anyway. from someone, if you can borrow it from someone um, or check it out at the library, if the library has it or find one. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's a good question because we should have re book recommendations for you. And off the top of my head, I don't have any. But um, yeah. And, I, I, you know, we have. We have a pretty. I have a bunch we, of books. We back have a, here. We have well. We have a lot of pattern books here. So you know, some of these books are are very uh, old. Um, this is a this is a book by uh, Judy Miller. Yeah, and he's and he's and she is. Towards. You know, this is like carousel horses and things like that. Um, this is a little book by uh, stained glass publishing um, and it's about it's got wizards and dragons and unicorns which i like unicorns anyway just look look through those books pattern books and you can always uh kind of goofy books uh with really funky patterns are ed sibbett books and they're kind of He's looking for history. And yeah, if you're looking, but glass if you're look, techniques. If you're looking for history and, and techniques and glass, you know the 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 one book and it just keeps coming to mind is the Stained Glass Association of America. It's an amazing book. It's just an amazing. It's about book. this thick. It is. It's on it's our the website. It, on it, yeah. It's the Stained Glass Bible, and it's got everything in it. Now they have. They have broken up in this uh, in that book. They have broken up. He has it. Oh, okay. Who has it? Uh, he has some of the chapters of the SHA yeah, that, reference. They yes, broke, they broke up and and actually printed some chapters out of that book. The most common chapters are printed. Like if you want to learn uh, painting techniques, chapter thirteen is all about painting on glass. And I tell you, I, I was really, uh, and maybe Barbara can put some pictures up next week, but I was really, I was really impressed when we went to uh, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I was impressed for two reasons. First of all, that was the first time in three years I had climbed a hundred steps. Second of all, when we went in there, I was looking at stained glass windows that were of the poured lead series from the 1300s and everything was painted. And then you could tell which pieces that weren't painted, they were actually, they used stainers on them. So the, the true glass, the true meaning of stained glass was very abundant in the 1340s and 1350s. Yeah, so maybe you guys have a museum nearby that you can visit and and learn. Uh, but we always go to the museums when we go out of town. We always go to the museums and look for we glass. Do. And there's there's some. Uh, you know, down in Winter Park, Florida, Florida, there's one of the one of Winter the, Haven. In Winter Haven, there's one of. Is it Winter Haven? Winter Park, Tiffany. I believe it is. The Tiffany. Winter Park, yes. Yes, Winter the Park. Tiffany. They're closed on Mondays. Closed on Monday. We know that for a fact. <laughs> and uh, but that it's one of the it's one of the only collections left in our country of Tiffany windows. Um, some time ago, they uh, they auctioned off quite a large collection of them. And they are, they were purchased by the Japanese. Good for them because they've got some beautiful windows uh, over in Japan now that are, and came from our country. Okay. Um, I had a uh, question about, do you ever, someone was watching one of your videos and they thought that you cut over another cut. And I think that's when you, when you tent, you cut more than one cut on a piece of glass to get the best. Yeah. I never. I never run my glass cutter over top of another score. Okay. 
because you know when you when you think about cutting glass and a lot of people do this okay they will um they will run that they'll pull that cutter one time and they think because they're cutting the glass they have to go over that another time and another time and they come into the shop and they say i went over that that glass i tried to cut that glass three or four times and nothing ever had it never broke well it did break it just broke into a million little pieces because you can't do that safely okay so even when you're using your circle cutter click don't when you when it falls into the previous score stop don't keep going because i can guarantee you if you go if you go 1 inch onto that score that you started with when you run that run and get it around to that area boom it's going to break off the wrong direction and come outside. Now you're going to have to grind that circle. I promise you, do not run your glass cutter <clears throat> over top of a score. Score it one time and break it. And while you're doing it, smile. <laughs> okay. Um, Karen Mills is going to her second class tomorrow. And she has a question about grinding. She's going to be grinding for the first time. Okay. Any advice uh, on equipment and uh, does she need gloves? Well, or? number one, Karen, rule number one when grinding or anytime you're working in your studio with the stained glass, make sure you wear your safety glasses. And especially when you're grinding because it flakes all over the place. Number two is make sure that uh, your your instructor should go over your grinder with you. And um, you want to make sure, I, I don't recommend using gloves. How about the little plastic things well, that fit over the tips? Guards. That, yeah, yeah, over they're your called finger. Thumb guards, oh, so for your thumb. Yeah, a little yeah. plastic thing. And they, they fit around your thumb kind of uh, like a guitar or a banjo pick, okay? They fit on your thumb like a banjo pick and you on both thumbs. And that allows you to hold the glass on the little uh, tray that's on your grinder and keep it pushed against your grinder. And always remember your grinder turns clockwise. So you come at it from the opposite side so that it doesn't spin the glass out of your hand. So you come at it from the right. Yeah. You yeah. would come at it. Uh, it's clockwise. It's, if it's turning, if the, if it's turning uh, clockwise, you want it so that you want to come at it from the from the right side. You want to come into the wheel. Don't come with the wheel from the left. You want to come into the wheel so that you're always putting pressure against it, even though it's trying to take it out of your hand. Grinding is a lot of fun, and if you um, you know, if you need a, a manicure, go ahead and take the time to do your nails right there. If you're getting too close <laughs> to the grinder head and you, you're not really sure when you dry your fingers off, if you've gotten too close, you'll see the little corpuscles where the skin's gone on your hand that you didn't feel. Little blop, blotches of blood will pop to the surface, but that's okay. If yeah, you're not bleeding, take, you're not working. Yeah, and take a break every now and then. You'll, sure, get, you'll get into it and yeah walk around okay we have another question is it safe to hang small stained glass panels one foot by one foot with 16 gauge stranded copper foil stranded copper foil that has been tinned with solder no 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 any the very minute you hang it that copper wire is already starting to stretch. And eventually it's just going to pull itself apart. 16 gauge, 10 gauge. I think it's too, you really should find a nice decorative chain. And uh, your supplier has chains that'll hold things up to five pounds. That'll hold things up to eight pounds and hold things up to 12 pounds. So, uh, you know, without getting too bulky, but one by one, you're better off to put a chain because you don't want your customers bringing that stuff back to you. And it and, will look nice. And you. I promise you, and Barb's seen them come in here that I've had to repair because they're hanging them from copper wire. 
10 to 1. Ten. Yeah, you, you don't want do it, it to fall. Please don't do it. That's all. I'm just, you can, you can. I mean, it might last, but it's why, not, well, why chance it? If you take two pair of pliers and just pull copper wire, you can pull it apart. It stretches. Yeah. It's very soft. It's a soft material and it's, it's very soft. And um, yeah. And you know, Karen, don't be nervous about using the grinder. Just, um, you know, make sure it's gurgling. Look at the cake. Make sure it's gurgling <laughs> when you're, when you're using it. The water's bubbling. And the water's bubbling. Sponge is wet. Yeah. And probably, you know, that'll keep the dust down. We've had a lot of grinders over the years and we, we really, I guess in our, in our glass studio, the, the grinders that we have the most of are inland grinders. Yeah. The whistling we have, we, we have, have them on our Amazon. Um, we have them on the website. On the website. Yeah. And um, so they have a, like a small grinder. It's called a whistling. And then they have the next grinder that's called a whiz. It's a step. Either up. one is good. And then the, the really nice one is called the wizard. So, and now we save up check, your look money. out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you're working on big projects and that sur that big work surface works for you, that's the grinder for you then, you know, so just check them out. See if what, what it is that you need that you can use uh, within your studio to help your job a lot easier and make your job a lot easier. Yeah. I just want to uh, say thank you to those of you who inquired about Ed's hip. He's doing better. And those of you who gave us a little bit of advice about who to watch to give us some advice on, so we, thanks, Joey. We've been watching uh, Stuart McGill, Dr. Stuart McGill. Yeah. And Mel sent us over to Brad and Bob, Bob and Brad, and some really good information. If oh, you have yeah. any back issues or hip issues Crazy, or right? anything like that, these guys on YouTube. And they're um, physical therapists, so they know what they're talking about. They know they're what they're talking like about. Like and smoke uh, up your really skirt, you know? very helpful. I have a lot of back issues and Ed has hip and we're, we're fine, but yeah. thank you for your concerns and advice. And it really helped a lot. Yeah. Cause it, well, you know, my, my father used to tell me all the time that getting old isn't for sissies. That's right. And he was right. He was every bit of right. <laughs> he was right. Uh, Karen, you can go to conwayglass.com. And we will, uh, if you go to any page, I think if you scroll to the bottom, that whistling is right there, or that whiz uh, link is right there. The There's a is, little picture of it. But it is, and it is a link for the whistling grinder, which is the number one studio grinder probably in the country. Yeah. So you can go to conwayglass.com and that'll, um, that, just go to and that, that grinder, page it's reasonable. and that'll go up. It's like yeah. $139 or something, but it comes with, uh, it comes with a few accessories. And Hey, if you do get the whistling grinder or any grinder, take two minutes, fill out that warranty card, because let me tell you something. Um, they are probably the best in the business with their warranty. So. Um, Karen, I will send you that link because uh, you sent me a. Where's my pen? Let me write that you need down. A pen? Here you go. We're okay, good. thank you. Uh -huh. um, you sent me your email, right? So I'll send the link to you. Yeah, you're gonna love that. Um, that grinder. Hey, we've got some grinders that we've had for 25 years. <laughs> All we've done is change the head on them. That's so right. When you get it, when you get a new grinder, folks, just. Here's our, here's my tip of the week for your grinder is get some Phillips milk of magnesia, <laughs> undo the set screw, put some Phillips milk of magnesia on it and put it back in. Uh, Phillips milk of magnesia works as an anti seize and the glass dust won't bother. And you'll actually be able to change the head on your grinder when you need to. Joey said, thank you. He needs to fix something. And he said, thank you for that advice on the uh, hanging on the hang. On yeah. the hang. I, I just, Joey, you just, you never want to have anybody bring anything back to you if you can help it. So. Yeah, we have a, we have a couple things that need to be fixed because of things just like that. Um, I have, oh, 
most most of our repairs are are work that uh, that people people don't think uh, about the structural integrity of the windows Sorry. or their projects when they when they build them. So just put a little bit more thought in it sometimes and uh, ask yourself if if it were me, what would I do? Okay. Um, we, I what? Nothing. I had a question uh, about do we travel and do we ever go to Anderson, South Carolina? Uh, we are well, we're planning, planning on doing traveling some traveling, yeah. <laughs> whenever we can. We just want this, um, you know, you guys. We just we need the numbers to be a lot better in South Carolina for us to get back out on the road. We, uh, you know, it's Anderson is not a problem because, you know, we're very familiar with the Greenville, Spartanburg, all that area. We're very familiar with that. Uh, we are uh, and we will be traveling, but we're just waiting on those numbers to come down just a little bit and see what we can you know, so that we can, we don't have to lock ourselves in the motorhome while we're out traveling. <laughs> yeah. So our idea is to go from Key West as far north as we can. We'll, we'll probably go to Ocracoke Island. Yeah. You know, that's one of our favorite places and to Key West. So East coast and we'll be traveling around South Carolina, but right now uh, we're going to have to hold off again. So um Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any, we really don't have any choice. We've been vaccinated. And I'm going to tell you right now. I'm ready. <laughs> if, I need a, if I need a third <laughs> shot, I'm the first one in line. And, um, but that's just me. And, you know, everybody, everybody's their own self. So you guys do, do what you do. <laughs> Catwoman. She says she is looking at a tool called a Power Pro Plus. It's for powdered frit. Is it to make powdered frit? To make frit? powdered frit. I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it, it, to make sounds like a sounds like an automatic uh, grinder yeah. for making frit. We we've been fusing glass for over 30 years, and uh, I've made frit with a hammer. <laughs> oh yeah, we've made frit with a mortise and pestle. But I'm not familiar with that. Power Pro Plus. I don't know. I don't I know. I could Google it, but tell you know, us what it is. Yeah, if you could, tell us what it is. Type it Cat in Woman. there, Catwoman. Because I'm interested. I would imagine it is a, 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 a machine, that, machine that makes powdered glass. And I, if it is. You know, you're gonna need definitely gonna need no to wear a mask to spread it in fine lines. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Is it like? Okay, I'll have to look it up. I've not heard of it. Yeah. We do fuse glass. Um. <clears throat> Fine but, lines yeah. are, yeah. Um, hmm. hmm. There's many different ah, ways very to make fine lines <laughs> with, with powdered glass. So, yeah. So that is hard to do, too. I can see that where that would come in handy when we're doing well, see, we'd, glass we'd, we'd swelling a, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we learned a little trick last night about. New tool. to the uh, Is to use a. Uh, a pen that you use an inkwell with. And we you, saw a glass artist. Um, and let me tell you about a glass artist. And check him in out. In the UK. Check him out. And he is one of my favorite. Derek, if you're watching. Derek Hunt. Yeah. He's Give me a thumbs UK. up, Derek. Yeah. Hey, buddy. He, he is in the UK. And he has some really, really good videos, especially on glass painting. And so last night we found it in one of his videos and he was painting on glass with a dipping pen and I've never seen that before. And so now I can't wait to try it. But and Derek, imagine, you imagine much. using a dipping pen with ink and writing a letter to someone. You can a do the same paint. thing with glass paint with and then fire paint. it friends. Fire yeah. it. 
So I'm going to get one of those dipping pans. And if you get a chance, check out Derek and his, in his uh, videos. I think you'll enjoy them. Yeah, I think you will too. And very interesting. Uh, you know, everybody has different techniques and that's what makes the whole world thing go around. And Fine Catwoman said it's for detail, for detail work. work. Yes. Okay. Yes. Detail work. I, I, yeah, we, we got to add more detail. We're just not happy with just, yeah, it's just do. always that uh, about getting that right detail, that right color. It, right. it really helps. That was Derek Hunt. Derek Hunt. What did I say? I, okay. What did I say? Yeah, Derek Hunt. Well, I don't know what I said, but yeah, Derek Hunt. That's right. That's his name. He's in the UK on YouTube. And he's actually a subscriber of our channel. So I don't know, Derek. I'm sorry I got your name wrong. Okay. So we've been talking about um, just to change the subject. <laughs> just to change the subject. Um, we've been talking about pricing our work. Number one question comes up at least once a week. How do we price our work? So we talked about overhead. Yep getting your overhead together. Um, so I was thinking uh, y'all probably, if you're interested in starting to think about expanding and pricing, you know, making sure that you're pricing your work correctly. Um, I'd like you to get a notebook and start keeping track of your projects. Um, just one page for your next project. Um Keep yeah, track. it's like a spreadsheet. Do a spreadsheet for your you project. Can do, you can do a spreadsheet. But on that page, on that project, you would want to put um, every time you work on the project, just jot down your time. You may work on your project for 30 days, but I'm sure you're probably not in there eight hours. But you want to kind of keep track of, of your time on your project. And then jot down how many pieces it has. And then um, how long it takes you to cut it, how, how long it takes you to right, foil it, how long it takes you to do each of those steps so that at the end of your project, you're going to know how long it took you, how many pieces. And over a period of time, you're going to be able to tell if you're pricing your projects correctly. Sure. So, um, well, you'll know, and don't be discouraged. You know, kind Man, of keep track of them. It's a good way yeah. to, to, Find out if you're, you know, because you're going to want to figure up a, uh, an the hourly price. wage. Yeah. And, um, and you only, you know, how, uh, quickly or fast you can produce your work correctly. So by doing this spreadsheet that Barb's talking about doing, it's going to give you a starting point and, uh, eventually will give you a finishing point. Yeah. Right. Once you've got some of these numbers together, like your overhead, your overhead is all your expenses that come in every single month. You need to know what that number is so that it, every month you say, okay, I, I got to make $500. I know I got to make $500. Yeah. Well, and if you're doing fusing and things like that, you're going to have to make more than that because now you're using a lot more electricity if that kiln's running. <laughs> and the price of materials is skyrocketing. Oh. Even if you, it's, some people can't even get materials. So we're lucky. We, we have good suppliers right now, but there's still some things we just can't get. We just get. can't get, you know. Uh, we did, we were able to get a, a load of uh, the Rouché paints in and we got those in today so that now we were missing a couple colors to finish the birds. Now that we can, now we can finish the birds up and get them uh, in the windows so that we can get started on that process again. And it's all good. It's all good. We got our paints in. So um, I thought that I'd be further ahead on painting this week, but I, I didn't get anything done, but I did get my new paint brushes. So. Yeah. Cause you know, we were, Barbara was wanting some stippling this one brushes. I did not have, which I really, really need all of these brushes for painting on glass were how much? $13. $13. That's crazy. I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, it's 13 brushes for $13. It's amazing. So we had got our paints in. We have our brushes ready. 
And uh, I'll so be doing some samples. So these brushes are, are for stippling. Can you imagine what the feathers are going to look like with these bad boys? Anyway, we just wanted to let you know these brushes are available. And we got these. Uh, where did we get these? They probably have them at Delphi or, or any of those local. I thought you got them from Shilling. I got them from Sunshine. That's right. Sh Shilling. Or Sunshine? Sun okay. Sunshine. Yeah. Okay. You got your paints from there, too. Yeah. And I, okay. get, well, I got our paints from Sunshine Glass. And, I mean, you can go directly to the distributor. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunshine has a, a minimum order. But by the time you get four or five different colors of paint and a bag of brushes, guess what? You're out the door already. Okay. So how's, uh, I hope everybody's well tonight. And uh, uh, down in Florida, you should be getting a lot of rain. It's coming our way. And uh, it's been raining here all day, actually. So I hope everyone is well. I hope so. Well, do we have any more questions? I don't know. Where to get glass? Karen, you're in Anderson, South Carolina? Is that right? Karen Mills. Karen, are you in Anderson? Can I think she is. Okay, well, if you are, just nod. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, let's see. Okay, but um, where to get glass? Karen was asking where to get glass, and I think she's in Anderson. I, I'm sorry. All right, so Karen, hey, you're in Anderson. Yes, she Guess is. Guess what? <laughs> 30 miles Greer. from you in Greer, South Carolina. Just um, It's all American made. It's all American made, and, it's, and none of it's made anymore. Palmetto Art Glass Company Palmetto Mirror in and Greer. Art glass. You can't buy 12 by 12s. Got to buy full you sheets. You got to buy sheets. Well, they're not full they're sheets, but sheets, to you, yeah. 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 And, but Kokomo, Wismack, Uroboros, Armstrong. They're all there. Yaka Ganey, spell that one three times. We have a video about that. Um, On our oh, website. You, uh, you've been there though, right, Karen? Have you been there? You know them, right? But anyway, if you don't, <laughs> go see them. Go see them. Go see them. Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass, they're still in the, on the internet. In the, Their phone number's right there. You'll talk to... We have uh, a video about their business on yeah. our um, YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel, yeah. It's uh, one of our... Trips. Trip videos, yeah. Yeah. It was one of our trips when COVID wasn't so bad, and yeah. we were starting and, back uh, with trips, uh, and then they... Alan and Jill ended. had just gotten their mm -hmm. shots, and we were on our way. We had one and getting ready to get two, so... Mm -hmm. But you you will really like them. You, have, you can't buy just little tiny pieces, but <clears throat> some of the most beautiful glass you'll ever put your eyes or your hands on really? is in that building. <laughs> and they have so much lead. experience. They have lead too. Yeah. Uh, have any lead. Uh, any tools that you may need? You know, maybe I don't, Call ahead, I don't know though. what they have. Call ahead. Yeah, I think it's by appointment. It is by appointment. It is by appointment. But they'll be happy to meet you there at your convenience. Yeah, and just convenience. tell them Eddie and Barbara told you to call them, please. Yeah. That, That's worth it. And a about trip. $3 will get you a cup of coffee at the Starbucks at the end of the road. Will it? I don't know about three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, so what's going on out there in the glass world? Any Anything? News? Anything? We are uh, we are working on panel number eight on the uh, live oak window. 
and uh, we'll have the birds painted by the end of next week. And we'll be starting on panels 9 and 10. Uh, and then by the end of about mid-September, we should be working on 11 and 12 and getting this thing finished up. Yeah, we got to book it. <clears throat> we got to get in gear. I can't work any harder than I'm working. I don't know what <laughs> she's talking kidding. about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He, well, he's been working. I've had my gear up, let me tell you. I am trying to land this plane, We've well, got baby. so much going on, it's getting kind of hard to keep up. I'm sorry. It's all good, though. Yeah. It's it, all good. And, you know, our new friends here on our YouTube channel, um, we all can help each other. Um, you know, about glass yeah, prices kidding. going down. I, I don't know. I, I really don't because what's happening is um, the raw materials to make glass really aren't, aren't the problem. The machinery, the natural gas, the furnaces, and above all, the labor that it takes to make just one sheet of glass is quite understandable why it is what it is. You know, we were joking the other day, uh, back in the 80s, spectrum glass we used to buy for $1.65 a square foot. And that was 24 by 48 inch sheets. So, and that was, so that's eight square foot. So we were buying a sheet of glass, two foot by four foot, for just a little over $12. Think about it. Now that same sheet, a half of that cost us $63. $63. Yeah. So we're, we're in, a, you know, we're in a place where we have to realize that what we do is we are creating art and therefore we need to be compensated. compensated. Sure we do. And don't ever think that what you're doing is just a little, you know, hobby that yeah. or you're, anyone um, can do because it takes a lot of skill, a lot of practice and uh, artistic yeah. ability. So, you know, don't be afraid to be compensated for your work and right. your materials and, Ask for that order. Just ask for it. And everything, everyone's going through the same thing. So everyone's paying these high prices. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know. Everyone's charging more than they did. I mean, you have to. If you want to stay in business, you have to make money. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, keeping friends is, is nice. But business is business and friendship is friendship. Yeah. And, so, you know, we have a lot of people that say to us, Oh, what are you guys doing? Playing in the glass blowing studio today? And Let me do. tell you something. At two hundred and fifty dollars an hour, we don't play very much in the glass blowing studio. We figured it. If you figure your glass, your your furnace running twenty four hours a day, thirty one days a month, six months at a time, it's not playing around, y'all. You know, because when we turn the furnace on, our our power bill goes from one hundred eighty dollars a month and almost $800 a month. So you know what? We're, we're not playing around in the glass blowing studio. We can't, you can't afford to. I want to play. I want, well, when we, <laughs> yeah, when we get to play is when we get our work done. I'll let you play a little bit. She you have does. to play. You she have to play. play. How she else are you going to learn? It's, it's not play, but she lets me get creative. And I love that. And I don't she let gets, you. I know, but when she gets creative <laughs> and we're creative together because we work together in the glass blowing studio. He gets a little bit uptight about that. So uh, we got to let him loosen it up, yeah, baby. Right. You got to let it roll. <laughs> let me play. Let yeah, me play gotta, in the glass. Yeah. You know, playing with the hot glass is, uh, I'm, I'm going to miss right, Karen. teaching People this year, but I'm really not. <laughs> yeah. So um, I enjoy teaching, but uh, I think a, a year off will probably help me do me good. 
Yeah, I, I agree. People just do not know the amount of time and effort and work and skill that goes into stained glass. So, well, yeah. it's like if I come out to your house to fix the window in your house and I'm charging you a service call plus the glass, let's just say, let's just say I'm charging you $120 to fix that window at your home. I'm not, I'm not charging you a hundred dollars for me to be there. I'm charging you the $120 for the 35 years. It took me to understand how to fix your window without ruining your house and to do it correctly so that it doesn't leak and you don't have to call me back. That's what you're paying the $120 for knowledge. Yeah. You're paying for knowledge. So y'all, please don't cut yourself short. If you've taken the time to learn how to do stained glass, you've already put your time in and you're learn, you're still learning. You learn every day, just like Barbara and I do, but don't sell yourself short because somebody thinks that you play with glass. Nah, don't do it. Don't be afraid to charge people what you're worth. And if you do that, they'll respect you a little bit more simply because if you're not charging enough money, they're kind of thinking there might be something wrong. So think about it. <laughs> well, think I know about I'm, I'm not it. really all the, you know. <laughs> what? Hey, Magali, I hope everything's good in school for your daughter. Amen. Preach it. Streeter, preach it. <laughs> I know he he means it too. He means it. You got to charge it. He, Preach it, hun. Where are you? Are you from up north? She lives in. <laughs> I Anderson. know she lives in Anderson, but uh, everybody up in the Baltimore area calls people hun, and I still call people hun. So I do now. I do. And you know what? In in Baltimore, in downtown Baltimore on Thirty Sixth Street, they have what they call. The Hun Festival. Can you believe that? I think our our the Hun Festival. Maryland people are probably still here. I, I I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't care. The Hun Festival. That's so cute. I'd Isn't like it? To go. It's so yes. cute. It's Amen. So cute. Preach it, Hun. <laughs> All is well. Doing some yard work since it's not too hot. Everything's good in schools. You guys that yeah. have children, everything's okay. A um, little bit worried. I know it's a I, trying I know, time. It's, yeah. It's a I, trying time right I now. I wouldn't want to be a parent right now no. with children, small children in school. So I hope all is well in your neighborhoods Prayers and in your to school. Um, I'm not sure about this pandemic or where we're going with this. Um, it looks like we might be headed for another winter that we don't like yeah another i'm not going to say the word but you know what i mean um so that festival is still in baltimore huh <laughs> <laughs> you know i grew up spending the summers she's wearing her mask good 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 see i i, I grew up um catwoman i grew up playing baseball for my grandfather during the summer months and we used to play down at a place called The Wreck. And it was just off of 36th Street and Falls Road downtown. Uh, I, uh, some of the best, fondest memories as a child were right there on 36th Street and Falls Road. 36th Street, that's yeah. right. I'm 36th here. Street and Falls Road. How about that? Magali said her little girl is wearing her mask. Your niece goes to the festival every year and Magali... I'm so happy that your daughter's wearing her mask. I know it's uncomfortable, hon, but you know what? You need to keep those it's, kids it's, safe. It's up, yeah, it's up to the parents to explain to the children this because I know that they don't understand it other than it's really bad. And uh, so anyway, just everybody, please stay safe. I can't preach enough, but I'm going to. <laughs> I quit. I quit preaching. Quit preaching. <laughs> quit preaching, dog. But anyway, I did. I, I, uh, I'm not going to preach at you. Everybody's grown up. We're all in this together. And the, but the quicker we figure that out, the better off we're all going to be. As things slow down, 
you know, everybody's going to have a little bit of anxiety and they're going to be wondering what, you know, what's going on, all that kind of stuff. You know, this is a good time for you to start planning what your next step is. Sure. You know, slow down a little bit and think about this kind of thing may happen again. Start a new business plan. Start yeah. a business plan. Start a plan that if we get locked down again. What you going to do? What are you going to do? Think about different ways that you can make money with your art, whether it's a website, your website or Etsy or, you know, some type of online. Yeah. Because shows, sales. you know, shows, shows are going to be obsolete be, right now. Well, that we hope the shows go, you know, the show goes on. We hope. But if your livelihood is dependent on shows, you might want to start thinking about how you can add a few other ways to make money right. besides shows. Right. What's your question, Magali? Go ahead and type it out, hon. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Barbara and I mask up every day. We, we do. Uh, we, wear our mask. Uh, I wear my mask in my vehicle with my helper and my helper wears a mask. And uh, we just, I got hair sticking out. <laughs> I'm trying to fix it. Yeah. Well, it's a little right. humid. It's a little humid here. And uh, because we're, we're feeling the wrath of what's coming up through the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, yeah. right now. Is so we're getting, getting that there? hot, humid, sticky yuck kind of air. And, uh, we uh, so we're feeling it, and that's why my hair is a little poofy today. Okay, I, what am I missing? A question here. Let me see. Okay, Magali had a question. I'm um, not sure what it is yet, but we have another question coming up. There we go. Okay, a show in October, a craft show. Afraid of not having enough inventory. What quantity, how much do you want to sell? How much would you, that's what you got to figure. How, how much does a show cost? How much do you want to sell to make it worth it for you to go and then double it? Yeah, that's so what I do. If your booth fee is $100, you're going to want to sell $500 worth of merchandise that day. So take $1,000 worth of merchandise. Double what you want to sell. In merchandise, take, take don't feel bad if you don't get exactly that, but shoot, go for double, right? Okay, so, so if, if your booth fee is $35, usually Barbara and I will take a thousand dollars to a show worth of inventory, even when we pay 35 or 40 dollars for that show, mm -hmm. we'll take a thousand dollars worth of inventory and we will sell at least half of it with no problem. It's a very small venue. So, you know, if you want to sell $500, yeah. take a thousand. If you want to sell 250, if 250 is good for you, just take $500 worth of merchandise. It yeah. adds up quick. You know that. So $35 for the show, it's eight hours long and you're going to pay yourself $15 an hour to sit there. So now we're up to $165. If you sell $500 worth of goods, you've made some money that day. Yeah. And it's a good way to make money and get out there and find out what people really want. Um, I would uh, say also take an order pad with you. <laughs> yeah. Take an order pad. Sure. But also do a couple, if you have time or if you have them in your studio, take some larger pieces for display. Usually one or two is fine. You yeah. want to have a couple of pieces <clears throat> to draw people into your booth. That's what you want to do. You want to draw those people into your booth. And once they're there, they'll buy something. Yeah. that And, the, and your items, if you're selling your sun catchers, so say between <laughs> 35 and a hundred dollars, depending on the size of those sun catchers, like your little, that little aloe, aloe plant you did, Magali, that bad boy's off the chain. Get you 10 of those and take it with you. Yeah. Do yeah. a cute little booth. But, but set one of them up in the flower pot like it's supposed, like it's made for. Or so a that, couple of them. And, or a couple of them. And give them the idea that you already have and let them walk out with that aloe for $85. They'll love and, it. And don't forget 
as you're making your inventory, think about the boxing and the packing and all that. So, you know, you'll have to yeah. think take, of size. Take everything. Yeah. Just take everything in. You know, you, you really only need one size box, but hey, you're, Christy. you're better off. You're really better off to do bags, four inches by eight inches by eight inches and a little brown brown bag and some tissue paper. You can you can uh, save a lot of money on packaging by doing bubble bubble wrap, recycled bubble wrap and um yeah, recycled bubble wrap. Oh my god. And the little club bag if you're doing sun catchers. Okay, so if you have bags and the other important thing is in your booth is to be up and interacting with your customers. Just sitting there reading the book, ignoring the customers will not get you money in the bank. They want to hear your story. They want you to tell them why that aloe plant made you so excited when you made it. And, and then hold it up to your ear and, and look at them, hold it to them, look at them and say, did you hear that? And they'll say, hear what? And you, you know what you say? You say, this aloe plant said it wants to go home with you. <laughs> and will that be cash or charge? <laughs> I wish it was that easy, honey. Uh, don't forget your business cards. And it would be good if you had a banner. So if you could get a banner, uh, I would say uh, Vista Print is a good place to start out to get your, your branding together. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're, you're never going to make everything just the way that people, just what people want, but what you can do for your booth is make your most popular sun catchers, come up with some new designs and come up with things that make people smile. So uh, a pop, you know, do you have a popular sun catcher? Make it in a couple different color ways. Sure. You know, think about that. And remember, so the Port St. The, the infamous Port St. Lucie <laughs> Yellow Canary. Just use my cardinal pattern that's on the website. Make him yellow. And there's your yellow canary for Port okay. St. Lucie. How do you decide what to make the most for your inventory before you sell in your booth? We always take our most popular item, right. our newest items, and, and then a couple big pieces that a couple big pieces to bring people in. Sure. And then you just fill, take extra to fill it up. But like I said, if you want to sell a certain amount, take twice that amount. Yeah. Um, take twice that amount. If you take a thousand dollars, hopefully you're going to spend 500. And if your stuff, believe it or not, you know, at, at 25 and $35, it doesn't take long to get the $500. I promise you. You may, you may want to go to some shows that you're not in and look at what other stained glass artists are doing. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh -uh. Um, stop no, by. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Introduce uh -uh. yourself. Tell them that you're a stained glass artist. You know, other stained glass artists are not uh, your enemy. They're your competitors, but they can also be your friends and they can also share information and help you along the way and help you out if you need uh, some cane or you need a certain piece of glass. So right. it's always good to make friends with your always competition good to make friends. Yeah. and find out what they're selling. Not that you want to copy what they're doing, but I mean, just to get a general feel. Uh, the type of festivals. Okay, Christy wants to know, how do you decide on the types of festivals to attend, arts and craft fairs only or family events festivals? I've heard that folks um, who attend the family events only spend money on the kids, not art. Well, this, this is, is true. true. That's true. Yeah, it's yes, true. It's true. So go to festivals that are... Uh, Number one, if you can find them, juried festivals, because you're going to find your your top artists are there, and you're going to find that uh, what work is there is is the cream of the crop. And uh, but I, it's really before you go do a festival, you should probably go to that festival, 
and they can, you know, they can give you all the logistics of the festival. Like, oh, well, we think about 25,000 people attended last year. So some of the vendors on, but on, some of the vendors only did $20. And so then there weren't 25,000 people. There. Okay. <laughs> <Was it? laughs> um, Magali is doing a festival in Halloween around uh, before Halloween. I just want to say that, you know, you're going to be thinking about Halloween and I hate to bring this up, but people are going to be shopping for Christmas too. So you might want to make a few little Christmas trees and yeah. or some cornucopias because <laughs> Thanksgiving's right around the corner. You know. Yeah. Um, but some, maybe some little Santas, some little ornament type things because people will be shopping for Christmas and you don't want to miss that sale. Just my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But um, yeah, just because it's Halloween, I would take each, two more holidays with you. And maybe a few of the aloe vera. Yeah, that sounds good. Magali. I mean, if this is, is this your first show? I can't remember. Is this your first show? Is this Magali's first show? Anyway, I'm not sure if it's her first show, but I, I know that uh, she's excited about it. I know I'm excited. I think it is her first show, but you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot. You'll learn what people want. And uh, yeah. so throw in a little Christmas stuff because there will be some people that are looking sure for Pendles to <laughs> South Carolina. Spring and fall festivals are great. Huge crowds near Clemson. Yes. Yeah. Listen to Karen. <laughs> Yeah, we have a uh, we have a uh, South Carolina pendant that we make, and we make it in black and garnet, and we also make it in orange. Oh yeah, don't forget South Carolina things. Um, or yeah, even though you're up there in orange couple. territory, yeah. they're not going to kick you off the mountain. Yeah, do some black <laughs> and or do some garnet and uh, black. Anything garnet and black, you Team know stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh goodness! Yeah, so but festivals are a lot of fun. You meet a lot of friends, or new friends, and you make a lot of friends. And um, but you'll have to make sure that you know just tell your story to your customers, and they will be. You know that's what they want to hear. You know they want to they want to hear they don't want to hear that you went down the street and bought this. They want to hear how you made it and how you got involved in doing what you do. Yeah. And, and, you know, make sure there's a way for them to get in touch with you if they want something. So sure. And tell them I, I do special orders and here's my card. Mm -hmm. And you know. if you do all that, you'll be totally exhausted by the end of the day, but sure. please tell us how it goes. We'll yeah. And take some help with you to pack up because yeah. unpacking, oh my gosh. unpacking is easy in the morning. When you get there <laughs> at seven, pop your tent up. But let me tell you after a whole day, Magali, and everybody else, Karen, Stone Mountain. you know, mm -hmm. and I know you're going to be tired. Okay. Setting up payments. We use a square. That's the easiest square or cash. No checks. No. Um, yeah, we've if had you, some. Yeah. If you use square, they only charge you when you use it. That square can sit in your desk for six months and it doesn't cost you a dime until you run somebody's credit card on it. Then they're going to charge you that percentage. And you know what? That's fair enough, y'all. That is fair enough. And Square works really well everywhere. It's easy. You know, you don't have to buy it. Hooks up to your phone. Just and make sure you get the yeah. right one for the Android or the, you know. Yeah. And you're going to find that your customers, when you run their credit card, they're already in there. A lot of them are already in there. A lot of them are already in there. And they're spend more money if they can use their credit card. Of course, you'll accept cash. But unless yeah. you know the person, I wouldn't accept a check because yeah. no, and, and, and not know, many people and use no checks. discounts for cash because you know what, your work is worth more than a discount. Yeah, don't. It's not Walmart people. Just say, oh, I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry. You know, I, I just. But can't. it is twenty nine dollars. Yeah. Usually, when we do festivals, we we figure the sales tax in, and we we do. That amount. With yeah, the we just tax. charge. We don't. We just say this is the price, and then when I get back, I figure you know. Then we did that. Then we take the eight percent out of it, pay our sales tax, and we're good. 
it's so much easier. What you don't want to do, I have a hand behind my <laughs> ear. Are you looking for a quarter, honey? Are you looking for a quarter? I'm trying to fix your hair. Okay. Why do you keep messing it? Um, so, you know, just do, do what you do. You don't need to give people exactly. discounts to sell your work. You know, you really don't. You don't need to give discounts to sell your work. Yeah. Venmo and Zelle. Uh, yeah, I guess that's okay. If you got every kind of different thing, but I would just do well, square. square and uh, you be know, done if, with they, it. if they, if they don't have a debit card that they can use a square, uh, I don't know why they would use Venmo or Zelle. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm not sure why they would do that. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I, and I've that. had that too. Oh, yeah, let's do PayPal. PayPal is the biggest I, I don't pain know. in the neck. <laughs> I don't know. Just use square. It's so yeah. simple. And yeah. everyone, everyone's familiar with it. And then you can look at your sales for the day and feel good about it. You can it. hit a button on your, on your phone and it'll tell you your sales for the day. It'll tell you your sales tax for the day. The only thing and what you sell, you can put all your products you in there products before you go there. to the show. Yeah. On load your, them up. Load them up. It's real simple. Even if you don't know very much about it, it's very simple. Have someone help you that knows how to set it up. And yeah. uh, the people that wanted to do your uh, Vino and Zelle, they just wanted to confuse you. That's what they wanted to do. The fee is low, two point seven five percent, I think. But I know that the fee for Square is very competitive with yeah. the other people. I so two, I don't think you're going to find anything. Five, yeah. I mean, anything. It's cheap. less than 3%. Yeah. Usually 2.75 is the going. Even if your customer uses American Express, it's still a lower rate than you would get in your retail store with American Express. Yeah. I don't know if it makes a difference with Square or not, but um, credit card, you know, they're going to spend more money with the credit, credit card. Credit cards are convenient and they will spend more money if you take it. And when you're at that point and you're at a show and you got a lot going on, pennies don't count. What nope. counts is those dollars. Yeah. And you want to sell. Nice know, round number, $35 you know, you dollars including take tax. The, you take the money and move on to your next Yeah, $42 customer. including easy tax. On Go on about it and, and just knock it down. Keep moving. Yeah, because if you have people helping you and you got one doing Zelle and one doing that, you know. It gets. Uh, and you don't want to do the book work for that. Square is easy to keep track of everything. Yeah, we like Square. <laughs> and that, you know, that's just my experience. But if you have something better out there, please let us know because we're all for easy. Make it easy on us. Yeah, I mean, and, and you want to be comfortable and you want your customers to be comfortable too. So, yeah. Because doing shows is very, very strenuous packing, unpacking, and planning. And yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. Well, we we don't anymore. We don't anymore, but we, but we did. did it for 25 years. And we so. did it for a long time. Yeah, that's right, Bob. And we... Um, this year, we'll be doing shows out in our own parking lot. We'll do two sh shows, one before Thanksgiving and one... One before Christmas. One yeah. before we, Christmas. We call those our pop-up galleries, folks. So we pop up a gallery in our parking lot for your Christmas convenient shopping. Yeah. So we just take everything outside. We have more room out there and we open up Artie and throw out the awning. And it's, it's a wonderful time. Put the awning out. we set up all of our tables. We put our, we put our benches outside. We put our pedestals outside and we load everything up with our glass and uh, sell for the day. And then we have two people that come in at five o'clock to help us tear down and put everything away because by the end of the day, Barb and I are just done. And uh, Magali says she loves chatting and meeting the vendors and what a wealth of information you got there. Sure. And we've made some of our best friends at shows. I mean, friends that have lasted a lifetime. We have met at shows yep. and we have met so many wonderful artists here in South Carolina and at the shows and um, yeah, that's probably the best, the best uh, part. Uh, dates for pop-up will be the Saturday before Thanksgiving and the Saturday before Christmas. Yes. I don't have those dates in front of me cause I don't have the phone, but they are the Saturday before Thanksgiving and the Saturday before Christmas period. Yep. 
and then we'll close down for Christmas. And then we're going to, if I can go keep, on a vacation, if I can keep from getting operated on in January with my hip, we're going to take a vacation. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. Yeah. So we'll put that information out. I'm still, we have got a lot going on and I just can't believe we're talking about Christmas. <laughs> I know I had, Oh, never mind. In October. Mm. Yeah. It just seems like we just got here, right? We just yeah. got to summer. Summer's almost over. Yeah, it's Stop uh, playing. hot weather's almost gone finally. Yeah. Something I didn't mind when I was uh, 25 or 30. What, hot weather? Yeah. Yeah. Now I can't stand it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. He used to love, we used to love to go to the beach. And now yeah. it's too hot. <laughs> it is. It's too hot for all of us. So, hey, everybody out there, some new people are on on chatting with us tonight. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe. And don't forget, you know, when, when it all comes down to it, give us a thumbs up because you know that's the finger that we like. <laughs> and don't forget to ring that bell just to, so that it'll let you know. It's a reminder to let you know that we have another live stream coming up. Next Monday night at 7 p.m. And we're still here. <laughs> I'm just letting yeah, you know. Yeah, we haven't gone anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> we're still here. Do we have any more questions? We'll be happy to answer more questions. If uh, Have we started the aquarium project? No, that starts as soon as we get the uh, Brook Green stained glass window installed, which will be September 1 or September. October, excuse me. <laughs> we'll start the aquarium project. We'll start working on it at night in right. September. That's right. Yeah. We'll be blowing glass at night in September. <clears throat> and then we'll get the Brook Green project installed and we'll finish the uh, aquarium project by the first week of November. Karen said the best um, hip guy is Dr. Murphy and Anderson. Okay. Okay. Well, he hasn't been, he, he had a shot in his hip. So, and I'm good. I'm just going better. to physical therapy and he's so. going to physical therapy. So we're ha so happy about that because he's too young for hip replacement. One more thing. Do you know if Wismac sends glass to individuals or just stained glass business? Um, they will send you a case of glass. If you want to buy a case of glass, yeah, you, they will send you a case, but otherwise, um, they're that they don't have time just to pack up yeah. you know, four or five sheets of glass. They deal in cases. If, if you have your part numbers of your Wismac glass, like, you know, W49M, uh, whatever. If you have your part numbers that you're looking for, um, Franklin Art Glass in Ohio is really good about shipping and getting you what you need. Um, Sunshine Glass Palmetto. And Palmetto. They don't ship small stuff, though. Who? Palmetto. Oh. She's looking. Oh. I guess she's looking for small stuff. And it's, you know, sh sheets. But in small stuff, if you have your part numbers, they'll, they'll cut it and ship it to you. The sizes of glass you can get at Sunshine are 8 by 10, 10 by 12, 12 by 16, and 16 by 21. Those are your sheet sizes that you can get from Sunshine, and also from Franklin Art Glass. Now, you could call Alan and Jill and see if they'll be happy to cut some sheets up for you, but I'm pretty sure it's right. just full in halves. That's right. Probably want to go yeah. there and get that. Yeah, yeah. you probably want to go. And you could probably travel to Wismack and, and buy, but, uh, you know, if you got a big job and it's worth the trip, can't seem to find Wismack Ripple Sage color. Ooh. Send me the part number. We, uh, yeah, just need the part number for the sage, sage. color. Um, ripple, ripple is, is know a, what it has is. a R after your number for yeah. an R. So it should be ripple. an R something. Should be something. I mean, something R. Yeah, W something R. And then if you'll get that part number for us, we'll see if they have it. Oh, Karen works. Karen works at the police department. Oh, cool. She's. She's one of the sheriffs She's in Anderson. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we should stop by there and see them. We should. 
So there, she said that numerous offices that have had their hip done and they're all doing great. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, you know, when I get ready for that, I don't, I don't have to have it done here. So uh, I can pretty much go anywhere that I need to go to make it happen. Magali, can you send us a photo of that? Yeah, because, you know, Wismac makes the uh, English muffle and they, uh, the sage English, is a color in the English muffle. That's sage, why I'm thinking yeah, it might sage, be English Sage, muffle. the word sage is in the English muffle. And if that's what you want, it's a, uh, it's uh, the ripple is a, is an English muffle. And the color sage is in the 16 colors of the English muffle. So uh, I'm sure if you call sunshine glass in the morning, they have it. 800-828-7159. Tell them Eddie and Barbara sent yep. you. Yep, 800-828-7159, Magali. Talk to Sean. Oh, used it on the aloe vera, the one you sent us? The picture you sent us, do you remember that color? That I don't I remember don't that was. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a look I'll at look it. I'll look at it tonight, Magali. But yeah, I'm pretty sure sage is a is an English muffle color, and it is made by Wismac. Is it a transparent or a um, opalescent? Mm -hmm. it's, it was English muffle. Well, I know English muffle is. I'm talking about the plant, the aloe vera plant. <laughs> Karen says she promises she won't lock us up. That's good. But uh, we'll be happy to help you with we'll the wait fundraiser. And see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. My God, yeah. I'll, I'll look at. I'll <laughs> I look at the, that. Transparent. Yes. Uh, yeah. I it's English muffle it sage. Yep. I think it's English muffle. Yes. And you know. I what? agree. Yeah. I'll see if I have any here, but I'm pretty sure that I don't. I have a sage G and A, but I don't have a sage English muffle. Yeah. I love English English muffle. English muffle is a reproduction glass of the glass made in the UK uh, around the mid 1800s which is easy to repair a lot of these windows that come over from the UK in these shipping containers and are sold at the. Uh, okay. Harmony glass sells English muffle, smaller sheets. Oh, it's not muffle. I already looked it up. It's ripple. Okay. Well, the sage number on a on the English muffle, it's EM forty nine something. So, the sage number, whatever it is, forty nine oh eight, forty nine thirteen, whatever that number is, for the sage, won't be the same number in the sheet in the R, but it will be pretty close. So, uh, a picture on white paper would a help. Picture on white paper would help, Magali. Maybe we can help you. Yeah, maybe we can help you. Huh? Okay. Okay. Well, that's all right. I'm assuming it's Sage, but we'll check it out and see what we can come up with for it's you. It's probably got some weird name or something. Well, <laughs> if you know for sure it's Wismac, I mean, they, you know. We'll find it. If they still make it, we can find it. Is it something you have to match or is it something that you just would like to have? Probably sounds like she's using it for the. Yeah, when I and I have your picture of the aloe plant, Magali. So I'll look at it. Barbara and I will look at it tonight, and um, I have we'll to send that link to Karen too. We'll see if we can find it. I, I, I might only be able to get you like the largest. It would be sixteen by twenty-one. So. Uh, yeah. The one you said that aloe vera you sent us, Magali, is really cute. So yeah, we'll 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 look for that for you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah, it's definitely a, it's either a ripple or a granite that she's got on that thing. But I'll look at it and Barbara will look at it and we'll figure something out, Magali. And I we have your email address, so what we find out we'll we'll send you a message. So you're welcome. Yeah. You guys rock. All of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Yeah. Coming thanks by, for the compliments. Stopping by and yeah. 
Hopefully and if you're I'll ever be- in Conway, let us know before you get here, not, not the day you get here, but like a few days ahead. Of, sometimes we're out of town. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we're with Artie and we're out of town. But I promise you, if you're coming to the beach and you want to stop by the studio, let us know in advance. We'll put our mask on and greet you with smiling faces. <laughs> we will. I we will. Okay. Is there any more? Are there any more questions? I think we've been on here a little while tonight, huh? We hour have. and a half. Hour and a half. That's great. Thank you all for all your questions. I hope you all are having a great evening. I think we're going to head home and we're going to go get something to eat. I think, I don't know. It's only eight 30. Did you know Chick-fil-A has run out of chicken? Can you believe that in Conway? They closed the Chick-fil-A today. Oh, and they closed another restaurant because they didn't have any food. Oh, what was that? Uh, Brother Shuckers was closed. Today oh yeah. They, did. they didn't have any food. Okay. Well, so, but Chick Fil A is Chick Fil A ran out of chicken. <laughs> so, so we're we going to find more shortages, folks. Yeah, we're. I, I got a feeling we're going to find a lot of shortages, <clears throat> and uh, you know, if you're working right now, um, save it up because you know I'm not really sure what's going on, and. Uh, We've been so frugal the last 15 months. I have a feeling that we're going to need to be frugal at least for six more. Something, something's got to give. And, uh, y'all, we need to get together as a team. And I want you to remember, there is no I in team, okay? There is no I in team. We're all in it together. We're all making glass together. That's right. <laughs> so we need to keep making glass and we just um, have to be vigilant, vigilant and patient. And we'll get through this. We'll get, we'll through, get this. through it. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll plan and make plans for the future. And, um, Well, there's plenty yeah. of food. It's just the chicken guy didn't show up in Conway today. <laughs> yeah, they they claim they don't have chicken. But um, I, honestly, we think it was the um, all of their employees or somebody young, got the COVID. No one was wearing a mask in that. And in you that know, Chick Fil A employees are all 15, 16 years old, and uh, they threw their masks. They threw their masks by the wayside. And they were wearing masks for a long, long time. They were yeah. the only outlet that we could get fast food from that they continued to wear their masks so we we did um we did go there but uh last couple times we went there there was no mask and then they shut down so they say it's no food i don't know eat more fries (laughs) 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 yeah we could we could amber we didn't see you last week we thought maybe you might have went to sturge's (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she was here, wasn't she? Uh uh-uh, oh, not last week. Oh, okay. Thought maybe you were selling glass at Sturge's last week. How did this? Oh, we've got another week for that, right? Yeah, another week of Sturge's. Okay. Well, we're glad to have you back with us tonight. That's awesome. <laughs> and I can't eat fries because of the carbs in them. So, yeah, we're trying to do, we're trying to do better. We're trying to do better. You know, it's, uh, COVID pounds are worse to get off than just regular pounds. Worked late. Amber worked late. Oh, okay. oh this poster behind us right here. I bought this poster because this is kind of how I've been feeling the last, <laughs> last couple of weeks. <laughs> just us two little people. Right there. And you guys are our world. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's awesome. It makes so it smile. I don't know if this makes me feel good or makes me feel afraid, but um, I think both. It makes me feel good to know everyone's out there, but it's kind of scary not knowing what the future holds. So, Or, yeah, or wondering just what is on the other side of that rock. I don't think I want to make the jump. But well, I thanks for needing to. your RDRV fix, Amber. It's, it's, good to, it's good to hear from you. Glad you're okay. And... Uh, 
I was watching a show the other night of, about South Dakota, and my gosh, what a beautiful state you live in. Holy cow. Yeah, it is awesome. gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Amber, what do you do in your day job? Does everyone have day jobs here, or, or is it? Are y'all just stained glass? Maybe you want to share that? You got it? I don't know. Yep, it's great. Nope. <laughs> we know what Karen does. Yeah. Somebody, a good friend of mine in, in Houston the other day. Oh. Lost 80 pounds and she's lost 50. Yes. Good. I lost 50 right before the COVID and uh, got down to a 40 pant size, which was awesome from where I was. And he gained it back, but uh, he's losing it again. I'm back into 42, so I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> okay. Finishing the last retail store next month and then travel and glass. Oh, wow. Well, you you awesome. upfit retail stores, I guess. Help set them up and help set them up. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, the, not a big box store, but uh, anchor stores. You go in and set those up. Ed's mom used to set up the cash registers all across For the country. For all potteries. <laughs> For all the potteries. <laughs> all the pottery stores. Yes. Yeah, so. She used to travel. That's exciting, Amber. Yeah. That's, and don't sell yourself short, Magali. I'm sure you do more than that, honey. You got a little five Scruff. or 10 year old daughter. <laughs> 20 years at 911. Wow. That's amazing. Great. Great job. Awesome. Scrubs since since 1997. Wow, that's a long time. It is. You know, funny. Uh, you were talking about uh, selling scrubs and things like that, and Barbara and I were looking. We were trying to find. Um, you know, back in seventh grade, I used to wear a thing called a smock, and we used to wear it in art class, and it had paint and clay and glue it had everything on it and i loved my smock and you know what they don't make them anymore or they don't make them that i can find anyway so uh so you so we so i wound up i usually buy scrub well not anymore but when i was in school i used to buy scrubs yeah. for art class and stuff like that i don't know if that's the same thing elliptical magali wow wow that's what they had me on today on the um, in my That's physical the thing therapy. That's like that. And yeah. yeah, yeah, he was on that today. Got my feet and my arms going all at the same time. I don't have any problems with my heart. Knock on wood. It's just my leg. <laughs> Knock on wood right here. <laughs> Elliptical. Yeah. Okay. Well, y'all, any more any more questions? We're gonna let everybody go and. That's cool, Magali. Keep it up. Keep it keep up. Keep up That's the right. good work so you can keep up with that child. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> She'll she be running you around all over the place. So. But that's awesome. So, hey, everybody. We're going to we're gonna give everybody an air hug tonight. Air hugs, air hugs. from Ed and Barb. <laughs> air hugs. I hope you can feel that. And feel the love that we're sending out to everyone and hope for healthiness. So uh, I'm still working on getting some videos out to you, but we will definitely be here next week at seven o'clock for right. a live stream. For a live stream. And uh, we thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I hope that our information has helped you. I know it's helped Barbara and I. This little this break each week on a Monday night gives us time to gather our thoughts, 
share our passion with you guys, which is glass and have you guys share your passion of the material with us. We it's really awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Just remember happy cutting from Barb and Ed at the RDRV channel. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Y'all have a nice night.